To support me, the best way is to buy my books, Larry Gets Lost Children's Books. Larry's probably been lost in your town. Available where books are sold, or you can go right through my publishers, sasquatchbooks.com. I'm appropriate for ages three to six, or we have board books, Larry Loves, newborn to three-year-olds. Here here are some sample spreads, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Portland. And we're starting a series of board books in Canada, Larry Loves Canada, available through birdhousebooks.com. Today's uh, class is uh, about how to tackle complex illustrations. There's a new trend on Instagram, you know, they're trying to make it into TikTok, and so artists are doing videos now instead of just posting images, but there's this new trend where you, on Procreate, you take a finished illustration, and then you put your your rough on a layer, and then you erase the layer with your stylus like a magic wand, and it shows the finished drawing, and I, I'm just struck by, as I see illustrations on Instagram, that's not how I draw. I don't have like this perfectly formed notion and then do a perfect underlay drawing and then do a perfect execution on top of that. I'm Every layer of mine is just hunting and searching and cutting and pasting and stretching. So I want to show a little bit of the dirty work behind these. This isn't going to be one of those where I just, just erase a layer and show you a beautifully complete drawing. Um, so we're going to go through... Uh, three complex drawings. One is just a uh, a fan sketch I did for Comic Con. One is an advent calendar I did for Funko, and then um, the probably the most complex a landing page for a Funko website that was never used. So let's begin. Okay, Sith Jet Trooper. Now this is a certain type of complexity, obviously. He's he's just a single figure, but as with everything Star Wars, you can see it gets very detailed. So as we approach a drawing, we want to ask ourselves some questions. First is what is the, the purpose of the illustration? Um then once once we have the purpose, what is the concept? How are we going to approach this? What is the the point of view of it, or what is the gag? What's the the purpose? The joie de vivre, the uh, esprit de corps, <laughs> something French. <laughs> okay, one of the best, most basic starting points is this book: How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by John Buscema, awesome uh, Marvel artist with chatty copy by Stan Lee. Fundamentals of illustration have never been broken down more elegantly than in this two-page spread. I. You can get this book uh, five dollars used, and I like to just leave it in those, um, you know, little library boxes, and I'll I'll write on the on the front page chapters two and three. I'm, I'm putting these messages out to young kids, but uh, just look how it, simply he communicates the presence of the sphere in those objects, even these that aren't circular, and then the cylinder becomes more, and the cube becomes more complex. Even more complex, we find the shapes in a car or a gun, very difficult objects, but when you break them down, it's just cylinders and, and boxes. The plane is cylinders. And then, of course, the human body can be broken down in those same shapes. These are, actually, a lot of these are Jack Kirby's, but with these uh, breakdowns by Buscema. So this one was a, a con sketch I did for... Uh, for San Diego Comic-Con. So it's a Sith Jet Trooper, kind of complex armor as... So I learned this trick from a guy I used to work with at Disney named Denzel Smith. He used to do all his concepts on, on memo pads. <clears throat> and he said, if you, if you draw on a small sheet, it forces you to simplify and condense the figure. And so... I just took a three by five card and did my first sketch of this guy. And you'll see, uh, the thing I find with these kind of complicated armors and stuff is just keep drawing the same thing. You'll, you'll notice something new each time you draw it. You, you see here, this is my first attempt. I kind of turn these, uh, I don't know, respirators on the side 
they're actually very long and elliptical and sort of bendy shapes, but here I'm just sort of make them into cylinders. So you see, that's obviously not right, but the next time I approach this, I'll look at those again in a more complex way. So thank, thankfully they let me do this in Procreate. Um, and so I'm gonna show you, so this is where I ended up, and, and of course Procreate gives me these options of changing this line color and doing that kind of stuff. Now you see that I've gotten the shapes a little closer to what they really are. And the next time I'd probably get that detail, you know, if I did another pass on an overlay, I'd probably get the shapes a little more, a little closer. This is, you know, good enough for the, the fans, right? Um, I'm gonna show you a time lapse of this uh, from Procreate and discuss it a little bit. So with a Funko Pop, obviously we're distorting, you know, in the movie he'd have a rounder head, a Funko Pop is sort of based on a, a rounded cube. So you see me breaking down that, that shape and this shape, those three basic shapes for the head. Now, coming in for the second round and cleaning up and making those shapes a little more complicated. And using my 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 parallel lines, they're 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 present in the design of the of the armor, but using those lines to describe my shapes. So everything adhering to those large shapes is selling my drawing. And then I just want to go to right here. That gray shape. It's just like a 30% black multiply on a layer. But that shadow, when you get complicated shapes, putting a shadow in it sort of um, holds everything together. It, it gives it a gestalt. It keeps the, the, the shape uh, as one. So that is my, my Sith Jet Trooper sketch. Okay, this was one of the first projects I worked on in Funko. It's an advent calendar box, and if you're familiar with advent calendars, 24 little boxes. You open up one for every day of advent, and then then you've got 24 toys by the end of it. So this was, um, it was a form factor called, um, God, I can't even remember. It's not Mystery Minis. We, we had so many different names for things, but they're these little tiny round-headed figures and they're about maybe uh, two inches tall a uh, friend of mine uh, victoria silcox designed these this whole freddy funko advent calendar so we had caroling freddies reindeer freddies snowman freddies you know and it's just freddy funko okay so going back to our the questions we ask as we approach a, a project so i'm doing a an advent calendar when it comes to me all the toys had been designed so We've, we know all the things Freddie does, but to me, when it comes to me, I'm just doing the cover. So what is the cover illustration? Well, this is a, this is a, Funko, Funko is a, there's no, f Funko isn't anything in itself, really. Freddie Funko, even their mascot, has no backstory and he changes appearance every time you see him. Um, Funko is other things. It's Star Wars, right? The, uh, all these licenses. So what do you do for a non-licensed Funko property? So my thinking was, well, it's Christmas. Um, we do kind of a Santa Claus North Pole toy factory, you know, like they had in uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or something. So, so that's kind of my so so what is it it's a it's a fun it's a meta funko product so my solution is i'm doing a funko factory on the north pole but my point of view which is a further question on what this illustration is going to be is that i want it complicated because i don't i don't just want one big freddy saying come on in i, I sort of want all the activity and the excitement of a uh, of you know the bustling uh, readiness for Christmas, and 
because Victoria had done all these different things, I had a lot of hints. I So I start designing this and about halfway through, I had about 10 of the Freddies in it. And then I realized that my goal had to be to get all 24 Freddies in it. So <laughs> there are some small ones that you see a couple inside the factory here, but I got all 24 Freddies in context. So, so this is, so here's the, here's the, the cover of the box. And then this was a design of a cardboard fold out thing that would be for your display. So you'd have that standing up and you'd put all your guys in front of it through the 24 days of Advent. So how do I approach this? When it's going to be complicated, it can be really daunting. And, and I don't just, I didn't just jump in and draw this thing. I started, um, I like to call these flower pots. Uh, my, my wife does our, our landscaping, our gardening, and I, I'm not much of a, a gardener. And so I always just thought when you had a flower bed, you just plant the flowers and you let them grow and there and there they are. But my wife, she'll buy the flowers, she'll leave them in pots and she'll move them around the yard and kind of see, well, how does this one behave in that light? And how do these look together? And, and you know, it's much more, uh, you know, a lot more uh, give and take, experimentation, moving around, moving the furniture um, than I, I realized. And that's how I approach these drawings. I start going, okay, well, there's a there's going to be a Freddy snowman. I, I just have a sketch page and I'll just throw ideas down. Well, I want to have kind of a snow cat vehicle. And so then we're going to have elves directing, loading the vehicle. Here's an elf driving and an elf with a bullhorn. And so how does this stuff get to the truck? Um, I want to really recommend this YouTube channel, FZD Design Cinema. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. He's out of Singapore. His initials are FZ. But um he talked about this this uh, this exercise they use in in um, set design. It's the I don't know if they call it this, but it's like a, a chicken experiment. So you take a chicken, a roasted chicken, and you put it on a plate, and then the plate will tell you what kind of table that chicken is setting on, and the table will tell you what kind of room that table's in. And that room will tell you about the person who lives in that house. And you don't have to just sit down and think of anything. That chicken will lead you to everything. And so as I'm brainstorming, I come up with a truck. Well, how do you fill the truck? I come up with a, a whimsical way to do that. Well, then where is this factory? So I have, I come up with this factory. I decide I'm going to have a kind of face on it, sort of a, uh, you know, cliched sort of friendly way of doing things at William Joyce sort of deal. Here's here's my truck in front of the factory. There's doors on the factory. Now I figure there's going to be a village. Like, where do the elves go for um, break? They go to Elf Espresso, and then you got to have, uh, what is that? Oh, Reindeer Games. So there's like an arcade for reindeers. Uh, I can't even read my own name. Oh, the Hat Hut, where the, <laughs> the elves get their hats. It's shaped like a big pointy hat. So I have this kind of you know, small city street going up there that, and and because going uphill, I can uh, show the detail above my skyline. And then, of course, you're going to have a big Christmas tree for the city square, probably a crown on top. Then I always like to have kind of air vehicles. So this is probably a Funko blimp, reindeers flying around, the smoke from the factory, and you don't want belching smoke. I've got kind of candy cane chimneys, so the clouds make little whimsical things like uh unicorns and stuff and then um i i realized later i got rid of this this is going to be all the reindeer houses next to each other um this is a a clock tower that will have kind of a jack-in-the-box crank on the side so i create all these little flower pots like dozens and dozens of little ideas and then i go back and start putting them together compositionally um and I'm not, uh, this is not maybe my greatest uh, composition, but, and I probably could have done myself some favors by working with tones more to separate, but there are like these major shapes here. This foreground element, this, the hill, and then uh, on the on the front, I, I used the elements but changed it. I did this kind of highway to unite it so I could have the trucks up there 
There's the North Pole on the top of that hill. So, anyway, that's one approach to a, a complex uh, illustration. All right, now, Funko World. This was a landing page for a um, website. So the idea is you'd come in and you would, you know, tap on the NFT building. And so I designed that like an art gallery and then you'd go inside there. So let me show you one of my process videos on this. Again, obviously, this is very much done in the flower pot uh, theory of composition because I just, I had to think of all the different places we'd want to go in here. And I, I also did something subtle here. Uh, this is basically, it's a little bit cheated. You'll see problems in my perspective, but it's basically a two-point perspective. So it's kind of like that, right? And if I take that away, you can see I kind of make these, it kind of makes these diamonds that get a little bit flatter as they go up there towards the horizon. Um, and so this allows me to move these somewhat successfully. You'll see my, my lounge fly shop is not quite. That, that railroad track gives you a pretty good idea where my, my uh, lines are. So you see there's a little bit of wonkiness in it. But um, there were certain things that are kind of small that I wanted more up front, like these, that are kind of fun buildings. And then there's some that have to be larger, like a concert hall or a sports arena or a haunted house. So I'm moving those back. So, so the big ones are down here on these kind of flatter diamonds that you're looking down on. And then the smaller ones are, are, are the more open diamonds. And then the, the bigger places are up in the, the flatter diamonds. So my perspective's getting a little more... Um, to the side up there and a little more down here. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and I will show you my process video on that to show you kind of the elements. So here I'm just sort of brainstorming the different businesses, a fun house, so there would be games and stuff inside there. And then you'll see that I make a critical mistake and so I, I eventually I originally had a gate that you'd enter kind of like Disneyland or something well so originally I had it so it had a low perspective so I'm my camera's down close to the ground I'm looking flat so that all the buildings and interesting sort of carnival shapes would go up in the sky like a roller coaster and stuff like that um, but what I realized as I started filling it in the different businesses is this is the wrong perspective if we go back to the beginning I'm choosing the wrong solution if it's a website as you see now I need to look down on it I need to be in an airplane looking at it a two-point perspective so I can look around with my cursor and fly down and pick through things not walk through it like a person so you, so now you see I've got my my head straight on the two-point perspective so now I'm banging these things out seeing where they fit and so there's not, this isn't one of those where I'm just waving my stylus and erasing a layer. You'll see things move and change and twist and stretch. So I originally played with the idea of a road before I used the, the train, which is obviously much more fun mode of travel. Okay, so that's, so this is just me setting up my world. I have others where I tighten it up, but they're not as instructive as this. Okay. And that is it for today. I, as uh, you find me in this YouTube experiment, um, I'm not exactly sure what my goal is. I think I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna continue uh, repurposing my old Funko classes. So these might be repeats for some of you. This kind of, this one was kind of. And um, I, uh, I think eventually I'm going to 
develop some sort of class curriculum. But uh, one, of, one of the odd things about where I am in this process is um, a lot of the, the things I discuss are based on these fundamentals I developed in, uh, in three fundamentals classes, which I have not yet put on YouTube. So I'm going to be referring to classes that don't exist, and then eventually at the end I'll go do those classes. So anyway, well, I hope to see you again in two weeks. Thanks so much.